So welcome. This is Meredith McDonough with The Call Within. And with the recent events in the world, I felt very guided towards doing a tuning session. Um, setting the intention, the tuning session would focus on um, how to take action when things feel powerless, when we feel powerless in certain situations. And there are are plenty of events where I think right now as a collective community, um, where we feel powerless, um, we feel uh, stuck, we feel confused, we feel frustrated, we feel angry, we feel sad, but we also don't necessarily know what is the right course of action of how to respond to certain situations. So if you have not done a biofield tuning session with me before, whether privately or in a group setting, um, please never listen to recordings while driving. They do, they can have a knockout like effect. Um, so if you do get sleepy or feel fatigued, you know, please lay down. Don't listen to these recordings while driving. You may hear my cat every now and again in the background. <laughs> um, some of the forks you will be able to hear very clearly and some of them you may not be able to hear, but I will always tell you um, what forks I'm using as I go. Um, what else was I gonna say? Oh, and to add to that was make sure you drink plenty of water. Um, so I would recommend drinking a glass of water before you listen to this recording and drinking a glass or two or three of water after you listen to this recording. Um, if you are particularly sensitive, I would also recommend um, taking a uh, Epsom salt bath um, for at least 20 minutes um, at your heat of comfort level um, and or putting your bare feet in the ground. And the reason that we do this is because when we are working in the bio field, we are working in your electromagnetic field. So it's not just about me banging a bunch of forks and, and this and sounding good. Um, this is not a sound bowl session. It really is about um, neutralizing the charges in the field of where we hold um, this with the intention that we're setting. So I've already done the um, intro prep on our proxy, who is my father who's visiting. And so what I noticed was um, lines over the hand and the shoulders, right and left hands and shoulders. And so the hands and shoulders in the biofield map, um, for those who are not familiar, and you don't have to like know this, is really our relationship with our anger. Um, saying yes and we mean no, caretaking and accommodating on the right hand side. And on the left-hand side, it's uh, sadness, grief, loss, and depression, our relationship with our mother and where we feel powerless. So it's very interesting as we have these events going on in the world where we feel powerlessness and we feel we don't know what the right course of action to take is, um, or we, we all may have different <laughs> views of what is the right course of action. Um, it lies on both sides. So um, one of the great benefits of biofield is it allows us to kind of unditch from those patterns and get unstuck. Um, so we're not, we're not uh, putting, I mean, how do I say this? We are neutralizing uh, charges, okay? And I will add more into the email that I'm gonna send out about biofield, what it is, um, but we're gonna get started. So just make sure that you're lying down. Um, take note of what you're noticing. Again, this is not a sound bowl healing session. So it's not about the sound sounding pretty per se. Um, it's really about allowing yourself to move within your own body and your own breath and take note of what you're noticing, what's coming up for you. So we're going to get started. So just take a few deep breaths. I'm going to begin activating the points of the feet and um, I'll be talking to you as I go along. And again, some of the forks you will be able to hear very well. And some of them you may not. Um, it just depends on, uh, you know, the tone and whatnot. So, so just here, just take a few deep breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. And you'll hear me breathing off and on throughout the session, just activating the points on the bottom of the right foot, bottom of the left foot. left leg, outside of the knee, right leg, outside of the knee. And you'll hear me hit the fork several times. Again, um, you will not hear the tone drop. I know some people are, they like to hear the, 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 um, the sound wear out or tune out, but actually um, 
and biofilm, we don't want the forks to run out of sound um, because you want to keep the, the sound high as that's how we're neutralizing, um, uh, you know, charges in the field that are ready to shift. If you have more questions about biofield tuning, there is the book Electric Body, Electric Health by Eileen Day McCusick. And she talks about the theory of biofield tuning um, and how it fits in with current uh, sound healing theories. Move your awareness down into your feet. And we're going to begin tuning the Earth Star. You'll hear my rolling cart in the background. My apologies. That's how I'm porting this laptop and forks around. So the Earth Star is sort of like the grounding center. Um, so it tends to get tucked up um, in between the ankles. So we'll begin. And right now I'm sensing in the collective that the Earth Star is sort of tucked up all the way to the top of the calves. So if you hear me breathing and talking as I'm working, I'm just kind of click dragging and dropping that Earth Star out down towards the bottom of the feet. You want to move it closer towards the earth. And this is kind of what I like to think of like our energetic uh, dumpster, uh, kind of like the energetic trash chute. So we aren't able to expel energy through the bottoms of our feet. It gets stagnant, it gets clogged. And the earth star is different from the root chakra for those who may have wondered. It's really about what's grounding us into earth. While our root chakra, at least I am sensing it to say it as, um, our root chakra is more about our sense of self and being grounded within the self. But the earth star is more about being grounded in our present reality. So I'm just feeling a lot of grief as I'm moving the earth star energy down. And it's almost like this bemoaning is the word I want to use. And the field, as it speaks to me, I use very specific language. So some people are like, why is she going to talk? It's, I'm talking because words actually move energy in the field. Using specific words in certain languages, they just want acknowledgement. And just take note of what you're noticing as that earth star is um, being pulled down towards your ankles, and being pulled down towards the earth. You might feel some sensation in your legs, you might not. There's no right or wrong feeling. When we take the time to work on ourselves, that is when we can go out and change the world. What we do have control over is ourselves, our own action, what we choose to do with pain, anger, grief. It really kind of comes back to this, uh, the word I want to use is agency, sovereignty. I'm going to switch forks here eventually. And just connecting the earth star to that tunnel of light that goes up each of your bodies, all the way up to the crown chakra, which is a couple of inches above your head. And again, if you don't know what these things are, you don't visualize them, it's okay. Just take time just to allow your field to absorb the sound. And just imagine like a garbage chute um, or a, a tunnel just opening up beneath your feet and just exhaling any tension or tightness, 
anything that you're ready to let go of, whether you're consciously or unconsciously aware of what that is, just let it go back to the earth. Let things flow away. I'm gonna move up here towards the um, sun star chakra. And the sun star is our relationship with space and time. And um, it is not to be confused with the crown. Um, it's our relationship with time and nature. So, park my laptop here. And same thing, just going to just move your awareness a couple inches above your head. Just slowly bringing that sun star away from the head and out towards, away from the head by a couple of inches. Just take a few deep breaths. And the phrase that's coming to mind as I'm working through the Earth Star is history repeats itself. So many of us are, I want to say there's sort of like this uh, pessimism of like, again, this is happening again. Connecting that sun star to the light bridge, tunnel of light in your body. I'm kind of feeling this swirling around the fork. Like it's like we're kind of stuck in this uh, as a collective in this, um, uh, in these, in these, sometimes these traumas and these events. And uh, we're like, how do we get out of here? How do we land up back here again? This is not, this is not what we work towards. We've been doing all these things and, and here we are again. And that might be relevant to other situations in your life, not just in world events. So the field is flowing. And my apologies for any background noise. We're really doing my best here. And if you feel any emotions come up during the session, um, it is normal uh, to feel that. Um, so please, if you feel angry, or if you feel sad, or you feel the need to cry, it does not mean you're doing something wrong. If anything, it means you're uh, probably doing it right. <laughs> Your energy is just shifting in the field. So I'm gonna come off here to the right hand side and to the right hand and just start working through the timeline. And I'm gonna be using a different fork. Um, it is the unweighted 144. And um, it's a relatively new fork, uh, very popular, but it goes through some pretty deep hyperspace and collective karma. Um, so I'm pretty excited to share it. <laughs> Coming out here to the edge of the field and be working our way in. And on the right hand side, which is oftentimes linked to the masculine, um, our relationship with father, um, our relationship with our anger, it's kind of like this, you know. Um, uh, wanting to take the bull by the horns. Uh, I keep seeing a person like grabbing the reins um, and the fork is very assertive right now. It's pointing directly into the body. So it's like, I want to get there, get to the point, get to the point.
And it's also where guilt and shame also lie on the right hand side. So when we're in these collective uh, events where we feel powerless, there's this, you know, we can't do anything. You know, what can we really do? What can I do to help? Um, other than just post on social media, you know, what are my options? What are my options other than going out to protest or do something else? And, and um, there can kind of feel this shame and guilt around having the privilege of not having uh, the same challenges that others do. But on the other hand, it's like, well, we don't necessarily, just because we feel guilty doesn't necessarily mean that we want what that person has got going on, whatever that might be. Kind of feeling this drop here, kind of the San Andreas fault. It's like boom, plummeting. So we're going to switch forks here to the uh, 174 workhorse, a little lighter tone. And true to its name, the workhorse really is about getting work done, shifting and moving energy. Again, if you begin to feel thirsty during this biofield session, please, please drink water. Um, so I'm coming up to the age of five, uh, it's almost like five, ages five to 10. And um, that, that is when most of us are, um, and, and when I bring this up, I know it doesn't seem like it's relevant to the current events in the world, but uh, the field again has a way of kind of tying things together and bringing the patterns uh, together is five to 10, you know, we're, we're, we're independent, but we're, you know, we're able to walk, we're able to start doing things, we're no longer infants, um, but there also is this lack of sovereignty and agency um, in being able to do what we wanna do. Uh, it's also a time of when, you know, we start, uh, you know, forming our identity and being busy and we're going out and we're exploring the world. We're learning so much. Those are really pivotal years. And it's also where we start, we start absorbing messaging, I believe, from the time that we're conceived into the womb. But ages five to 10, it's like, not only are we absorbing messaging, we are also taking that messaging out into the world and spreading it with others. And that usually is from our parents, those beliefs. You know, they say racism is taught, it's, not, it's learned, you know, it's taught, um, it's shown. So whatever, you know, uh, things we were taught or show or learned in those times, especially really any time, but pivotally by ages five to 10, um, you know, we are taking that out in the world. That is kind of like our mini gospel, <laughs> you know, without even realizing it. And obviously not all, not all gospels resonate and, and truth and justice and kindness. It's also where we start to learn how to handle problems and conflict. How do we deal with confrontation? Again, much of that is shown to us. We learn that. Some of us might've been taught to be more passive and avoidant. Others of us might have been taught to be more in the face and shout and yell. Just coming back in with the, I'm gonna come back in with the weighted fork here. The weighted forks have a lower sound, so you may not hear them as well, but just take note of what you're noticing in your body. I like to think of the weighted fork as like the dentist drill that kind of goes in, bevels down to the cavity, getting to the root. And again, you might not be able to hear these as well, but yeah, they're still, they're still forking going. <laughs> I'm 
Now, obviously, we're not going to heal our relationship with conflict in one day, but even just being aware, the awareness now that all of us, every single being on this planet is going to learn conflict at some point and how to manage it. Different cultures, different societies, different groups all had different ways of managing conflict. And we now have our own. That sounds a lot smoother now. And just even that, again, that acknowledgement, the word of like conflict management. How do we manage conflict? And the judgment around how conflict is handled. What we perceive to be the right way. The right side also holds the pattern of our challenges moving forward, how we handle obstacles. And conflict is, is an obstacle in some way, shape, or form. There is a resistance that we are coming up and meeting. How do we handle resistance? And resistance also goes to, even though the right-hand side, the masculine side, is all about going out and taking action. Again, that resistance of, well, what if I take the wrong action? What if I do it the wrong way? Um, and uh, overanalyzing. And the judgment. Kind of feeling like this pressure, like wanting to release the pressure off of a balloon, like slowly deflating it. And there's this pressure for change, for change to happen, for progress to be made. It's like, we can't continue living this way. What are our options? What else is possible? There's gotta be other answers. This is literally what think tanks are for and lobbyists. There's, there's another way. And it's almost like everyone's trying to get there, but just in different ways. Same destination, just different routes. Is the way that my guys are, that's really sure. The way my guides are describing it. Sorry, guys. It's a little, little harder than I intended. And the really cool thing with biofield tuning that I love is that we can move through a lot of patterns on the different sides of the body that aren't just in relation to our timeline, but also in relationship to our parents our ancestral karma, our collective karma, um, which is one of the reasons I enjoyed it so much as a modality is it's kind of like a, you can clear up a lot of stuff <laughs> in a very short period of time. So feeling this desire to make room, new pathways, new possibilities, new options. When we feel powerless, it's oftentimes when we don't feel like we have options. It's like, there's only black and white. There's only one way. There's only one way to do something. There's that phrase. There's more than one way to skin a cat. Not that I would skin cats, but that's a clarity. We have options. 
Let's make room for new ideas, new routes that we haven't tried before. Not just in uh, world events, but even in maybe everyday lives. Maybe some of you will take a new way to work tomorrow or walk a new way to the water cooler or do something different. We've got options. Even if we aren't aware of what those options are yet, they will present themselves. Switch forks here. I'm gonna come in with the 528 DNA repair. It's a little bit of a lighter fork, kind of smooth everything down. But I also wanna use this to kind of open up the pathways, open up the energetic pathways. And right now our, our fields, I feel like the collective field is very much in a shell. Like everyone's in protective mode, you know, uh, valid, you know, given things going on in the world. Um, but it's also a time for us to expand. We face conflict. We, we may desire to contract versus looking at as an opportunity of where we need to expand um, in our mind, in our spirituality, perhaps just in our field. It doesn't have to be a conscious expansion. And we have more than one or the other. You know, we kind of think of like, you know, forks in the road. It's like there could be multiple forks in the road. There could be two paths, six paths, seven paths, eight paths, nine paths. Doesn't have to be linear. Growth isn't linear. Growth is an individual. Growth for our collective society. And that, that I'm finishing this the right well finishing but I'm completing the adjustment on the right side of the right hand dropping it into the right palm hold a lot of energy there so just imagine your palms to be open to possibilities and expansion Coming over here to the right shoulder. And the shoulder and biofield tuning is the pattern that typically comes up. It doesn't always have to be this exact thing. Is saying yes when we really mean no. Um, caretaking, accommodating. So obviously with these world events, it's like, where are we accommodating? You know, where are we kind of rolling belly up and being, okay, I guess it's just the way things are. It's like, you know what, wait a second. Um, no, let's not. We, we can take action. We can take collective action. Um, you don't have to be sitting ducks in our own schools and offices and movie theaters and grocery stores. Like, fuck that. 
I know it's not like the PC thing to say during a spiritual adjustment, but no more, <laughs> no more of that. And just working through and really being brought into the right hand side um, halfway point. And what that basically means is um, as we're being drawn into the halfway point is um, working in the ancestral river as I'm working with the unweighted 440, 144. And again, the unweighted 144 fork is really, it can be very shrill, sorry. Um, but it's also about, again, working through karmic stuff. There are a lot of patterns here. It's kind of like lifting the blanket and seeing all the stuff that we've been shoving underneath of it and like, oh no, I don't want to look at that. And this fork's like, no, no, no. We must look. We cannot look away. So where in your life are you accommodating? Where are you saying yes, but really want to say no? Maybe where are you a passive? Uh, there's that movie, I forget, maybe it was Kate Moss, wasn't it? Maybe it wasn't Kate Moss, but the movie that's coming to mind, sometimes my mail slot, my guides bring it to me as a movies or images. Is, you know, she tells the, you know, in the trial for the Nazi, she says, um, you know, I was just a cog in the machine. I didn't have a choice. You know, everybody was doing it. And this is sort of saying, hey, we're not, we're not cogs in the machine. We are not that person. We are not those. We're, where are we doing that? Where are we being a cog? Where are we slipping into passivity? Versus using our voice, using our socioeconomic status, our age, using whatever we got, our education level, our privilege to advocate for others. Because often advocation, we also become aware, of, again, of lifting the blanket of where these inequalities lie. We get comfortable. So just coming in with the weighted fork here onto the right shoulder. There's kind of like this little sticky point, which is like, but this is the way things have always been done. But our collective is calling for changes. Society cannot keep up in this way anymore. Things are moving too fast. People were getting lost in the shuffle. Time to slow down. Where can we advocate for our fellow man? Maybe that answer doesn't come right now in this moment. Maybe it comes later at the right place, the right time. I don't know. It'll find you. I know it will. And again, the 144 moves and shifts a lot of energy in a very short period of time. So like things that normally took a lot longer, just 
don't seem to take as long with that new fork. Just completing the adjustment on the right shoulder. All of this will just continue. So the adjustment is completed for the right-hand side. I'm going to stop this recording and resume it on the left-hand side in a separate recording.